okay so today i am going to discuss with you about the transfer rna or also called as trna now what has been mentioned in this uh, in this uh, book the rna which possesses the capacity to combine specifically with only one amino acid in a reaction mediated by set of amino acid specific enzymes by a set of amino acid specific enzymes called amino acyl trna synthesis synthetases transfer that amino acid from the amino acid pools to the site of protein synthesis and recognize the codons of the mrna is known as the soluble rna or also called as transfer rna in short we say as trna so what does trna means in this uh, above definition uh, it says almost all the function trna carries specific amino acid into its amino acid attachment site called as acceptor arm located on the 3 prime end and look at the acceptor arm which has been mentioned here this is the acceptor arm so in this acceptor arm amino acid has been attached to the trna specific trna and this reaction attachment of amino acid to the trna is catalyzed by a specific enzyme known as amino acyl trna synthetases that uh, transfer the amino acid from the amino acid pool means lots of amino acid are there from there a specific amino acid attached to the acceptor arm that is on the 3 prime end of the uh, trna on the basis of the anticodon sequences which are located on the anticodon loop so we will see this anticodon loop as we can see loop like structure it consists of anticodon sequence and this anticodon sequence somehow they manage to complementary base pair with the codon sequence in the mrna that will code for a particular amino acid so this is about the trna that's why the name comes transfer rna it transfers and comes to the site of protein synthesis who into the ribosome where it will uh, complementary um, pair 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 with the codon sequence in the mrna carries that amino acid as catalyzed by the amino acyl trna synthetases and then the it, it carries out the reaction process actually so does a trna molecule has to perform uh, several high complex function during protein synthesis so it has various complex function in trna like it interacts with the specific synthetase enzyme that means specific amino acyl trna synthetase enzyme it will interact second it will possesses a site for binding an amino acid that means in the acceptor arm as i have shown you this acceptor arm in this site particular amino acid will be bind depending on what type of anticodon sequence present in the anticodon loop of trna and it also interacts with the ribosome because without interacting with the ribosome how it will enter to that protein synthesis site during translation and it also contains an anticodon sequence that must be exposed to the codons of the mrna okay so this is the main function of trna and the definition of trna now who have discovered this uh, trna structure robert holley 
in 1965 and his colleagues uh, reported the complete nucleotide sequence of alanine tRNA they have actually sequenced sequencing sequencing means they have identified that which nucleotides are present right one after another from 5 prime to 3 prime end in that tRNA now they have discovered they have uh, sequenced the alanine tRNA that means the tRNA who who which has been attached with the alanine amino acid attached at the acceptor arm on the 3 prime side of tRNA and based on this sequencing process they have sequenced the whole tRNA of alanine the tRNA alanine that's why they have received a Nobel Prize uh, in 1968 uh, with other two scientists Hargobind Khorana and Nirenberg now it has been said that nucleotide sequence are now known for more than 100 different species of tRNA so there are different organisms present in our living world that's why we categorize them into various taxonomic groups and different species tRNA has been sequenced nowadays you can find them on your NCBI website NCBI website which is one of the bioinformatics online website uh, from there we can uh, you can have to uh, uh, able to retrieve uh, get that information that what are the sequence found in the tRNA more or less they are same okay now it is saying that the transfer RNA has several unique characteristics okay now it is a little bit different from the other two RNAs that I have mentioned with you the mRNA and the rRNA it is relatively very small molecule the tRNA is a small molecule may, uh, of 75 to 90 ribonucleotides in length and it is much smaller than other mRNA as well or any of the rRNAs and has a sedimentation coefficient of only 4s so just I have said in case of rRNA although you will i think you have not provided that lecture of rrna little bit delay in the lecture uh, i will provide to you later on because of high size so the sedimentation coefficient of your uh, transfer rna is uh, just 4s 4 swathe work units and uh, depending on that so they are very light actually second unique feature of tRNA is the ratio the ratio of AU that is adenine uracil and GC are near unity which suggests that formation of DNA like double helical segments which is the secondary structure in previous lectures I have said about the DNA structure that uh, according to the Chargaff's rule according to the Chargaff's rule uh, the, the sum of purines is equal to the sum of pyrimidines in the DNA that means the amount of adenine and guanine present in the DNA is equal to the amount of cytosine and thymine but this rule of Chargaff Erwin Chargaff, Erwin Chargaff does not apply on RNA molecules because RNA is single stranded but here strangely t in tRNA although tRNA is a single stranded they have complementary base pair they have folded and tried to base pair among themselves at certain regions as you can see the loop the, the loop regions are those regions where complementary base pairing has not occurred but the rest of the regions have been complementary base paired although it is a single strand RNA and strangely it has been found that in tRNA the ratio of adenine guanine and the ratio of the adenine guanine with uracil cytosine are nearly equal which satisfy the Chargaff's rule now this is actually the secondary structure of tRNA okay 
Now in this double helical segments, GC base pair are more common than AU base pair as suggested by the ratio of AU GC equals to 0.7. So it has been mentioned that in a tRNA molecule, the amount of guanine cytosine base pairing is common. Maybe due to the state for the stability of the tRNA because guanine cytosine base pair with three hydrogen bonds which shows that they want a stability structure stable structure all they are single stranded but they want a stable structure third point the feature that we see in a trna is that all trna molecules have a tertiary structure for which we now know and magnesium ion concentration is important for its stabilization now the for the three dimensional structure if you see this one the b figure you will see uh, the amino acid attachment side which is shown in purple at the extreme okay and this three dimensional structure is stabilized not only by the hydrogen bonding between the uh, between the ribonucleotides but also by magnesium ion it has been said in the number three point that all the trna molecules have a tertiary structure previously we draw the secondary structure which is known as the clover leaf model as shown in the figure a but now three dimensional structure is also being drawn okay and for its stability it also requires the magnesium ions for its stabilization the fourth unique feature that we will see that there are some unusual bases some unusual nucleotides are found in the trna molecule like for example we find pseudouridine which is written by the psi symbol p a psi psi symbol as you can see i am zooming it Okay, the pseudouridine or PSI, it is an unusual basis. Now, pseudouridine, then dihydrouridine or DHU, in short we say DHU, dihydrouridine. So, some of the unusual nucleotides are also found in this tRNA molecule like pseudouridine, dihydrouridine, etc. Now, these unusual nucleotides are occurred as a result of your isomerization. Remember the tautomerism, okay? Those who have oxo functional group, they exhibit tautomerism in DNA. Similarly, here also there is isomerization change in the position of the functional groups stru structure of the of that particular molecule by changing the position of the functional groups leads to isomerization and pseudouridine and dihydrouridine also enosine are uh, the actually the exa are, are, are the result of the such type of isomerization reactions and many of these unusual nucleotides have a methylated derivatives of common ones. That means most of these nucleotides have a methyl functional groups attached. Okay, like for example, I methyl guanylic acid, I methyl uh, as adenylic acid, I means inosine. Okay, I refers to inosine. I means inosine inosine methyl guan guanylic acid that means a methyl group somehow it has been attached okay so methyl groups are present also now these unusual bases in the trna was understood well by molecular biologists during the construction of two dimensional model of trna from the primary sequence of nucleotides of known trna it was realized that most of these uh, trna pairing according to the watson creek pairing rule that means this trna base pairing uh, actually occurs according to the watson creek pairing rule or chargaff's rule but it usually bases fail to do because they carry substitution or alteration in those position that participate in hydrogen bonding 
so some of the unusual bears as they are carry, carrying an extra functional groups like for example i have said inosine methyl guanylic acid methyl group has been attached number of unusual nucleotides are found and these unusual nucleotides are attached with methylated derivatives uh, they are actually methylated derivatives they they have a methyl functional groups attached and due to which uh, that unusual base does not actually involve in complementary base pairing and leads to the formation of loops in the tRNA molecule. So we can see the loop like structure here the D loop, the anticodon loop, the T psi that means pseudo uridine C loop. These loops occur due to the presence of unusual bases, like for example, in the D loop, there is a presence of dihydrouridine, which is which is a uh, actually. Uh, uh, which is uh, actually uh, your um, modified base modified base where no base pairing has been occurred and thus a loop formation has been occurred there in the TSI U loop due to the presence of pseudo uracil presence of unwanted bases uh, modified bases not unwanted modified bases uh, so complementary uh, so base pairing does not occur with the opposite base as a result loop formation has been occurred okay So th this is the uh, uh, the thing that we normally uh, see in uh, case of tRNA molecule. Uh, let us move to the next page now. Let us move to the next page now. Okay, to the next page. Okay. So these are the features of your um, tRNA molecule. Let us study now. Okay, so the first point is all tRNA molecules have a guanine residue at the 5 prime terminal end and an unpaired CCA sequence at the 3 prime end. So if you look at the figure, this is the structure of tRNA. I'm zooming out. You will see at the 5 prime end, from the 5 prime end, 5 prime end is this. At the 5 prime end, there is a guanine residue present. And uh, at the 3 prime end, there is a CCA sequence. This is the acceptor arm or also called as amino acid attachment site. Because the amino acid at this position becomes covalently attached to the adenylic acid or ACE. A of that CCA sequence during polypeptide synthesis. So this is the first point of the fun of this tRNA that at this amino acid attachment site, amino acid is attached as catalyzed by amino acyl tRNA synthetase. Let us move to the next point number two, the amino acid stem or helix consist of seven unpaired base so the amino acid stem or you can say amino acid helix it consists of seven unpaired base so this is the amino acid helix it has seven unpaired base although four has been shown here the diagram is a little bit improper but seven unpaired base is present in this amino acid stem okay at the three prime end then comes the third point the t stem the t stem or also called as t loop sorry not t loop t loop is different loop is actually the place where base pairing has not been occurred due to the presence of unusual bases or modified bases t stem is the stem where base pairing has been occurred just before the just uh, uh, just after the t loop so the t stem is composed of five base pairs last nearest t loop or t pseudo uridine c loop is cg 
so it is saying that this t stem the t stem that you can see here this t stem is composed of five base pair okay it consists of five base pair and five base pair the last one is the t psi u loop which is not base pairing the, among themselves the t loop just it is located before the t stem if i say from 5 prime to 3 prime t loop comes first so this t loop consists of seven unpaired bases as you can see seven unpaired base has been shown and it is involved in binding of r rna molecules to the ribosome now why this loop is important this t loop is extremely important in binding with the segment of a ribosome uh, that is the r rna okay r rna makes your ribosome there are various components of r rna that makes your ribosomal subunits so it interacts with the rRNA with the ribosomes in order for carrying that particular amino acid to the site of protein synthesis. Then comes the anticodon stem and anticodon loop. Now, this is extremely important because it is the site where it will try to base pair with the uh, codon sequence in the mRNA. So first let me discuss about anticodon stem. Anticodon stem includes five pair bases as shown here. Five pair bases are present. They have the completely base pair. They have not named that what are the bases found in this anticodon stem. And the anticodon loop consists of seven unpaired bases. Anticodon loop consists of seven unpaired bases because presence of uh, some unusual bases. The third, the fourth, and the fifth. The third, fourth, and fifth, which has been circled and named as anticodon. The third, fourth, and fifth of which, from the three prime end of nucle of the molecule, constitute the anticodon. So you can see the third, fourth, fifth from the three prime end. So this will be third. This will be third. I am moving the picture to the right side so this is the third this will be the fourth and then it will this is the fifth so the third fourth fifth from three prime end will actually um, uh, constitute the anticodon sequence anticodon sequence allow temporary complementary base pairing with the codon sequence found in the mrna that codes for that particular amino acid and on the basis of this anticodon sequence, tRNA carries the specific amino acid as catalyzed by the amino acyl tRNA synthetase. Okay, next come the fifth point. The base on the three prime side of the anticodon is a purine. The base on the three prime side of the anticodon is purine. Let us see the base on the three prime side so the three prime side means the right side okay the right side the right side extreme right side of this anticodon is will be a purine means either adenine or guanine immediately adjacent to the five prime side of the anticodon uracil and another pyrimidine occurs now just adjacent to the three prime side comes the five prime side if we move if we move clockwise so just uh, adjacent to this three prime side of anticodon which is a purine there will be a uracil or an another pyrimidine when occur okay next comes the seven point a purine let us see the seven point okay a purine often dimethyl guanylic acid a purine also called as dimethyl guanylic acid it is located in the corner between the anticodon stem and the d stem so there is a purine 
present in the between the anticodon stem and the D stem known as dimethyl guanylic acid. Let us see the figure. Yes, between the anticodon stem and the D stem. Let us see between the anticodon stem and the D stem. There is the presence of a modified purine known as dimethyl guanylic acid that means that is the methyl group located at two positions of this guanine residue and it is located on the corner that is between the anticodon stem and the d stem then comes the d stem we are proceeding towards the five prime end then comes the d stem d stem calls consists of four base pairing uh, near ribonucleotides uh, and after just uh, um, before the D, D stem there is a D loop there is a D loop because in this D loop there is a uh, presence of a modified base called dihydrouridine also called as DHU loop and this DHU loop or dihydrouridine can vary in size and uh, it may be about 8 to 12 unpaired bases the D loop helps in binding the amino acyl tRNA synthetase. So this D loop uh, actually works um, the first uh, initial reactions in attachment of the amino acid to the tRNA. It actually helps in uh, bind, binding of amino acyl synthetase. Okay. Now, the, so we have already completed the whole part, but we have not mentioned this part and we have not named this part. It is loop like structure. If you see, we have mentioned the D loop, we have mentioned the T loop, we have mentioned the anticodon loop, also the stems, also D stem, T stem, anticodon stem, and also the amino acid helix or amino acid attachment site, the acceptor arm. But we have not mentioned this. So what is this loop which is present between the T loop and the anticodon loop? It is actually called as variable arm or variable loop. Now this variable loop is lacking in some tRNA and it varies in its composition. That means we cannot able to um, perfectly, we cannot able to identify uh, that how many base pairs are involved or how many unpaired bases are involved in this loop actually. Okay. Okay, let's move to the next page. Sorry for that. Okay. So, the three dimensional structure of the RNA. So, the diagram that I have shown to you just a little bit ago was a two dimensional structure, but the RNA also uh, for its stability they maintain their three dimensional structure. So, in order to understand the structure and function uh, relationship of tRNA, three dimensional structure was worked with the help of x-ray crystallography study now x-ray crystallography is a very expensive technique but nowadays we can uh, sorry wait for a minute nowadays we can able to uh, do it with the help of uh, some tools uh, bioinformatics tools with the help of computer uh, software so x-ray crystallography uh, study can be done and from which we can able to um, get that three dimensional structure information of this tRNA. A. Klug, A. Klug, which is a Nobel laureate, uh, laureate of 1982, he have contributed to this uh, three dimensional structure of tRNA. Then another scientist, S. H. Kim, have proposed the most acceptable structure of this T three dimensional model of tRNA in each cell. It has been said that this three dimensional structure, the three dimensional structure looks like the letter of inverted L. So if you see the structure of tRNA, it looks like the structure of inverted L as shown in figure B but the real figure is A the A number figure is the real so it looks like L like structure if I move that figure in a three-dimensional plane 
okay then you will able to imagine that looks like an inverted L of thickness 10 angstrom only and each arm of the L is doubled over by bonds holding complementary base pair together so it has been doubled because doubling occurs it is a single strand but it has been doubled due to the base pairing between them at some places and such L shape can also easily derive from two dimensional clover leaf model the two dimensional structure that I have shown to you just a little bit ago was actually a clover leaf model this is the clover leaf model actually this is the clover leaf model and this is the the three dimensional structure or the L model okay or you can say TDS model also okay next move to the next line okay So, what it has been mentioned here, extended anticodon hypothesis. This has to be uh, remembered. It has been said that, it has been reported that, that the performance of anticodon when isolated from the tRNA is weak and inaccurate. So, when they were doing experiments in sequencing the tRNA structure, its anticodon sequence and its importance. So, when they isolate the anticodon from the tRNA, it is very weak. That tRNA is very, very weak and inaccurate also. Complementary base pair has not been done between the mRNA. I have said now that the anticodon sequence in the tRNA a complementary base pair with the codon sequence in the mRNA but not complementary base pair occurs with the uh, codon sequence it is very weak and, and inaccurate in base pairing however the performance of this anticodon triplet is enhanced if a matching sequence is present on the anticodon loop on and on the stem on the either side of this anticodon triplet so this anticodon triplet matching with the codon sequence in the mRNA it can be enhanced, can be increased if the matching sequence is present on the anticodon loop and on the stem, on the anticodon stem on either side of the anticodon triplet. As a result, extended anticodon hypothesis was proposed which suggests that the structure of anticodon loop and that of proximal anticodon stem are related to the structure of anticodon. So this anticodon stem also plays an important role in matching with the um, uh, in, uh, in trying to base pair with the codon sequence of the mRNA. It has been said that the as anticodon is very very weak it has it has uh, I have said it has a anticodon uracil on its three uh, it has a, and it has a purine on the three prime side of the anticodon and then just after the purine if we move towards the five prime of the trna there is a uracil and other pi or any other pyrimidine occurs so but how does perfect base pairing between the mRNA and anticodon stem occurs anticodon loop occurs it's it's due to the it's due to the matching sequence the matching sequence which is present on the anticodon loop and on the stem on the either side of the anticodon triplet further I will also explain about the Ubel hypothesis also just uh, after this video uh, which will show you that how matching between the anticodon and the codons occur actually okay the Ubel hypothesis now this is known as the an extended anticodon hypothesis which has been proposed which suggests that the structure of anticodon loop and that of proximal anticodon stems are related with each other okay 
so anticodon is extended into the nearby sequence and consists of all 12 nucleotides arranged in the following way according to this extended anticodon hypothesis um, anticodon loop and the the bases which are found on the anticodon loop and in the anticodon stem 12 nucleotides are arranged in the in this following way which has been mentioned in this extended anticodon hypothesis first two nucleotides will be present that two nucleotides will be um, either it will be cu that means cytosine and uracil or pseudo uridine uracil or uracil uracil at the five prime side of the anticodon loop so at the five prime side of the anticodon loop there may be uh, uh, cu that is cytosine uracil or pseudo uridine which is a modified base uh, or uracil or uracil uracil on the five prime side then three nucleotides of the anticodon that is the three prime nucleotide of the anticodon being very important and termed as cardinal nucleotide so the three nucleotides of the anticodon which plays an important role in base pairing with the codon sequence okay that will be present then five if we proceed towards the three prime from five prime then five base pairs of the nucleotide in the anticodon stem which will be covalent co conveniently written by giving only the base on the three prime side of the stem okay so let us end up this uh, chapter so this is the main thing uh, that is mentioned in this uh, tRNA structure that is the tRNA the stem loop the tRNA uh, the acceptor stem or it's not acceptor stem sorry anticodon stem and anticodon loop plays an important role um, plays an important role in uh, your um, okay they plays an important role in comp complementary matching with the codon sequence in the mrna and um, including this anticodon stem and loop there are 12 nucleotides involved like for example and like it is saying that according to this hypothesis extended anticodon hypothesis they have said that at the five prime end there will be two nucleotides that is uh, it may be a cytosine uracil or pseudo uridine uracil pseudo uridine is the modified form of uridine as done by isomerization reaction or uracil uracil at the five prime side of the anticodon loop then after that if we proceed towards the three prime there comes the anticodon loop in the anticodon loop there will be um three nucleotides which plays an important role also called as cardinal nucleotide uh, according to the Ubel hypothesis they will base pair with the codon sequence in the mrna and then after that there will be two nucleotides at the three prime side of the anticodon loop and five pairs of nucleotides in the anticodon stem which can be co conveniently written by giving only the bases on the three prime side of the stem okay so this was all for uh, the tRNA structure i hope you have understood this part okay let us um, move to the L shape structure. I have not mentioned. I have mentioned the L shape structure. So, in this L shape structure, you can see that at the acceptor arm there is a CCA sequence. In this side, it will attach with the amino acid. Then you can see the position of the D loop, the T psi U loop, the D loop, the anticodon loop, and the small loop, which is the variable loop. But uh, in reality it looks like this in reality it looks like this the a structure as we can see okay so they may can ask you to draw the figure of this uh, trna structure generally they give this diagram either two dimensional or three dimensional okay so just go through this concept
and i hope you have understood if you have any questions you can ask in the whatsapp group